How are you? You're fine or fine? Yeah, you had a good lunch? Yeah, don't fall asleep, no, no. Um, my name is John Anderson. I'm from the School of Chemical and Environmental Engineering. In environmental engineering, we have two degrees. Environmental engineering, which is the hardcore, and then we have chemical engineering with environmental engineering. So we have two ways you could do that. Now, my background, I'm from Norway. Then I spent six years in Scotland, University of Strathclyde, did my PhD. To further ruin my accent, I went to uh, Pennsylvania State University in the US. Spent there seven years. And then I'm here as a social professor in environmental engineering. So if you don't understand my accent, what do you do? Ask, Ask questions. Well, you should start as a student here. <laughs> yeah. So, and also, I know what it is to know about environmental engineering. I know what it is to about chemical with environmental engineering. Well, I guess you don't know, and you're here to learn. So if you have any questions, if you have anything you're wondering about, what do you do? Ask, ask questions. So you just ask any time what's going about. So who are we? <coughs> we are close to 400 students. Um, we are focusing on how to deal with the environment, how to do engineering solutions. Anybody wonder what the environmental engineer is about? If I say environmental engineering, what do you think about? Well, who, who, is, um, who is remediating land? Who is fixing water to take it from a diluted water to? Who is uh, fixing uh, global warming, taking our CO2 from the atmosphere? All that is environmental engineering. So that's just reflected in our research centers. For example, clean water technologies. Uh, fuel energy center to take over to renewable energy, which is a hot topic with bioenergy and stuff like that. Uh, mining and mineral center is going out more to sustainable research technologies for recycling of um, electric, uh, electronic waste and so forth. So what does an environmental engineer do then? Well, we try to get students to focus on a better world and apply solutions to that. And these are one of the first years out in uh, sampling um, samples directly from a local stream. So every year we have one week, you go out in the environment, you sample, <clears throat> and then you take it into the laboratory and you're testing on the laboratory and see what the problem is. So you may ask yourself, is this a big area? Well, in 2005, about 25 billion pounds in the UK was spent on this in the environmental engineering sector. And it's expected in 2015 to grow to 34 billion. And that's just in the UK. So it's a very big industry. And we have a campus in Malaysia and China, and we're expecting those two countries to grow very, very quickly as well. So what we want then is to get engineers to look at the sustainable future and making um, solutions where you could fix environmental problems. For example, can you reduce the global warming? Anybody can see what this is? Yeah. There's a Europe at night, just coming in, and you can see Norway up there with uh, some glaciers and so forth. Still light in the UK, and you can see how energy has been used in Europe. And if it's totally dark, you can see the outline of Europe completely. So obviously how to re reduce energy use and efficiency on the housing and so this built environment. But what we're trying to do is how to keep the lights on without affecting the overall global environment. So this is one of the projects one of the graduates have been involved in. And he's now at Bridge Petroleum, so BP or Beyond Petroleum. So he's looking up in Petershead in Scotland. You uh, take natural gas from a, a, a well. You get it into a conversion center. And then the carbon dioxide, you inject that into a reservoir. And then hydrogen uh, going off as um, it's burning a, a power station, sorry, and then uh, you have uh, electricity going out and this is an all recovery as well. So we're working on trying to get engineers to be involved both in taking up and uh, sustainable re uh, use of fossil fuels, different technologies to convert fossil fuels over to what we call clean energy and renewable energy. So my research background is uh, biofuels. Anybody heard about biofuels? Yeah. So bioethanol and so forth. If you take me, if you give me 100 kilos of straw, how much oil do you think you can get from that? 
is about 70 kilos, so 70% conversion from straw into bio oil. So uh, there's a lot of opportunities. What the UK need is a, a big sector of engineers that can go in and do the engineering solution to the problems uh, identified. This is one of our other graduates from environmental engineering. She was featured in uh, Sunday Times in spring 2007 and they are looking at how you could power the future in UK. And this is Emily Spearman. Um, she started off in Schlumberger. When she had a, she was graduating, she had three job offers. One was 31,000, one was 32,000, and one was 34,000. Which would you go for? So she went for the largest one. Uh, Schlumberger is a very big company with about 75,000 people employed in 26 countries. She was traveling around the world. When she earned enough money, she actually going back now to the um, to UK. So if you want to work with technologies to uh, change the environment and deploy technology for the environment, environmental engineering for you, I haven't gone through the overall course. I just want to give you a flavor of environmental engineering. If you're interested in the course, Go to a school, which is uh, chemical and environmental. They have all the prospectus there and courses and so forth. And they can give you a tour of the laboratories as well. Any questions? Yeah? Uh, how much actual chemistry would be involved in the chemistry environment? Do you like chemistry? I do. I do very much. All right. So uh, what we ask for is chemistry, physics, and mathematics, one of those, two of those. Um, now, you start the first year, uh, we have uh, general chemistry to bring you up online. But what we want to do is to give you a feel for chemistry so you can apply that to an environment and understand what's going on. So most of our uh, people coming in, they don't like the first year chemistry. But in second year, they actually take more chemistry because they realize that that's what they need for that. So, uh, but depending on what your interests are and where your strengths are, uh, that could be organized. Uh, accordingly to an individual basis. Does that answer your question or? Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? No? All right. <laughs>